what kind of food access to what kind of food will people in urban areas have and who's actually going to be producing it now the conventional answer is we're going to have 10 billion people living in the world in 2050 we need to increase the production of food right the challenge of food security is a production challenge and we need to unle unleash the knowledge of Monsanto and Syngenta and uh, agrochemical companies to massively increase production uh, the FAO claims we need to produce 60% more food by 2050 in order to feed the population of the world. I would suggest that this is a somewhat oversimplified version of the challenge that we face um, <coughs> and present a slightly different discussion. The one thing I will agree with the FAO is that we are not going to be able to dramatically expand the area of land that we commit to agriculture. Um, agriculture has a very big climate footprint. Um, we also want land to do other things, right? We need land to be forests so that they can be carbon sinks. We want to preserve the uh, charismatic megafauna, like some Wagner students are uh, uh, enjoying here in uh, Mole National Park in Ghana. Um, we need, <coughs> excuse me, uh, lands for wetlands. We can't simply turn all land into agricultural land. So if we're not going to be able to increase the agricultural land footprint, we need to figure out how to increase the efficiency of the food system overall, as well as agricultural production to improve its productivity um, to feed 10 billion people as opposed to 7 billion people now. And we have to do that facing what is going to be a, again, unprecedented climatological challenge. So here's the World Bank's estimates of <coughs> what are likely to be the adverse yield changes between now and 2050 due to climate change. So the US makes out, Canada and the US make out kind of okay. We're gonna probably have a net kind of 1% reduction. Some parts of the world are gonna, of the North America are gonna do better. Right? Parts of Russia are going to do better. Climate change is going to be a net benefit for some parts of the world in agricultural terms. People around the tropics, well, in polite terms, we would say they're going to be screwed. Right? In the regions where we have some of the most severe food security challenges are the regions that are going to see some of the most negative effects on yield of very basic crops. So that becomes the political challenge. Are we able to make a move on climate change to address the range of challenges that climate poses, both for food security and for other areas? And are we going to mobilize political support to deal with the already existing food security challenge? Because <coughs> we're going to cut through that. Um, because the, if production was the answer, then why do we still have people who are food insecure now? Right? If production was the answer, we would, we would not have a hunger problem, right? because we already produce more than we can consume. So the nature of the world food system is not fundamentally one of scarcity, but one of overproduction. Right? Some of you might have read the dairy farmers are trying to get the US to buy oodles of cheese because there's a huge glut of cheese in the US market right now. Corn prices are in the toilet, and corn farmers are, are very upset about that. <coughs> the origins of the U.S. food aid program was not primarily to combat hunger, but it was to dispose of agricultural surplus in the United States. So we have lots of food, in fact. Uh, the best research that's been done on identifying food waste shows that in North America and Oceania, which are the islands in the Pacific, 42% of all of the food available is lost or wasted in the food system. Most of that in the U.S. is lost on the retail end. It's lost in restaurants and supermarkets and in your refrigerator. <coughs> in poor countries, most of the loss of food happens at the farm level, right? Or it happens in the storage level, the lack of warehouses, the lack of uh, places to safely store grain away from pests, the inability to actually effectively uh, remove all of the produce before it spoils, for example, because of the lack of refrigeration. Right? So what you see is relatively similar levels of waste throughout a food system. 
right? We have lots of food. A healthy chunk of it is actually just wasted. And if we included the numbers for fish here, it would be even worse. So we have a system that actually overproduces food. Why then are people hungry if we produce more than enough food? Why do we have hungry people? Oh, thanks. Why do we have hungry people? If it's not the availability of food, it's access, right? We need to figure out how to enable people to have access to the food. Either they have a job that pays them enough money that they can buy it, that they have physical access to it, <coughs> or that we have programs like school feeding programs or social support programs like Bolsa Familia that enable people to have access. So before we start to say we need to massively increase production, can we in fact show that we can take the existing production and enable everyone who needs to have access to it to have access to it? Because simply increasing production is not necessarily going to ensure that people, pockets of chronic hunger are going to be addressed. So all of this is to say that this is an amazing growth area for MPA students. Because the politics of food security, particularly in the context of climate change, is a wicked problem explicitly designed to put the skills of MPA students at work. It's about data. It's about measuring, monitoring, traceability in the food system. It's about certification, organic, fair trade, etc. It's about having an understanding of the whole value chain in the food system and being able to link operations management, environmental sustainability, human rights, <coughs> as well as productivity in that food system. It's also about leveraging the value chain for the benefit of small producers, like the fair trade chocolate that we were eating earlier. And that ultimately hunger is not a technical problem, it is a political problem. Right? The fact that in Western Europe there, are, there is basically no hunger as an issue shows that with the right kind of political mobilization and exercise of political power, you can effectively eradicate hunger. Ending hunger is a political choice. And that means it's something that we can actually do something about and something that master students can actually do a lot about.